Good evening, church. Sorry, I'm getting used to the whole no response thing. So, hey, uh, it's Pastor Andrew. Glad to see you guys. Um, I have the joy and the honor of bringing the word tonight, and I'm super excited. Um, I've been preparing this for the last couple of weeks, and so, um, man, I'm, I'm just excited to be up here again. Um, it is a bit different to be able to just be here and not see everyone's faces and just see a camera, but, man, how great of an opportunity. Um, I want to take a minute before we get into to any of the word and, and, and any of the message and just honor Pastor Jonathan for what he's done over these last few weeks. Um, what a, a, a difference, what, what a different thing this is that we've been going through over the last several weeks, couple months, you know, that no one really saw coming and no one could have really understood the extent of what it is. And so um, I know that as we've been watching online and engaging with things that are, you know, in ways that are a little bit different, um, he's done a fantastic job leading our church and taking care of people. But also, I just want to say that what he's done from, from this perspective here, because I know for you sitting at home, this has to be very different and a bit odd to just sit and just be watching a screen. I mean, I know that when we sit here in the auditorium, that so many times we get to see the person there and we look up at the screens on the side. But, you know, even with that, this is very different. And so standing here, being so used to faces in the crowd and now just kind of staring at a camera and staring into the couple of staff that are sitting here, it, it feels bizarre. And so how interesting has it been to watch Pastor Jonathan take it in stride? Like this is not an easy deal. Even when you're used to preaching and talking to people, it's not an easy deal to stand in an empty room and come with the same passion and come prayed up and come ready and just believing and trusting God to move and doing it with no people in the room, but knowing that God's meeting people right where they are. And so in that, even getting a chance to step into this and stand in the pulpit and stand with no one in here, I just appreciate how much he's been able to give and do in such a, a very different time. And so this would t typically be that kind of moment where it's like, yeah, we all clap and we all shout and we amen. And you can do it. It's just that we can't hear you. So, like, you can't, you might be doing it at home, and, and I get it. But, man, if, if you're friends with Pastor Jonathan on Facebook or you follow him on social media or, or maybe you're watching on Facebook or, or YouTube now and you can comment, like, man, send him a message. You know, send him a, a direct message. Comment on a post. Like, uh, the things that we would normally do here in service to just encourage and appreciate the leadership of our pastor. I would encourage you, do it, do it in new ways. We're, we're sitting here doing this in, in, in church in new ways, and I would encourage you to, to send him those things, the things that we would typically do. Uh, man, in place of claps and shouts and amens, um, and let's do it in comments and messages and things like that to be able to, to just encourage our pastor with all that he's done. You know, I, I look forward to the opportunity, as I was talking with Elise, you know, we look forward to the opportunity to just catch up with people again. And I'm sure you feel the same way. I mean, I know that some of us get out to go to the stores and, and maybe work or things along those lines, but we just want that opportunity to catch up again. Like, to go beyond what the message and to mingle and to see how each other's been doing. I mean, I know that we're all probably going to have those conversations of like, man, how did you handle the whole COVID thing? Like, what was it like for you and for your family? But also, there's just like, Life, like life that we've missed, that we haven't had the opportunity to like hear from each other and see in person. Um, so I figured like, you know, I, you can't tell me how you've been doing, but I figured like I can tell you and at least like we kind of have this halfway communication to feel like we're catching up a little bit. Um, you know, all I could think about when I was preparing for that is Steve Wilson on Sundays. Like, how many people that walk by and it's like, good to see you, good to see you. And Steve just, man, every Sunday, I don't even know if you're listening, but it's just like, glad you got to see me, right? Like, that's kind of how I feel right now. Like, I don't get to see you. So I guess it's just like, glad you got to see me. Like, I guess it's a Steve Wilson thing. I don't know. But um, so, like, let me catch you up with a little bit of, like, me and my family so we can kind of have that feeling. Um, in case you've been wondering, Elise is feeding me. I am not sick. I just lost 30 pounds in the last three months. So, like, some people, I've, I've seen you at the store. Like, I've run into a couple of you, and I've seen, like, I saw somebody the other day looking at an aisle, and, like, give, and it was that weird, creepy thing, like, 
so why are you hunting me? And I realized it was somebody I knew from church who was like, I thought it was you, but I wasn't sure. And it was like, well, you could have said hi. Like, you didn't have to creep up on me. It was really bizarre. Um, But I lost some weight. I also shaved the beard off. Now, that was fun. How I wish you could have been here. Because walking by some of the staff on the first Sunday I did it, like, right now it's back. Like, like I, I've shaved it a couple of times. Like, it's, it's, it's back. But, but the first Sunday walking in, you should have seen, like, some of the staff, like, almost invited me of, like, who are you? What are you doing here? How would you make it in the door? Um, like, it was really fantastic to do. So I was hoping to have that moment where, like, seeing everybody again, I could kind of do that. But then here we are. So that's that. Um, <laughs> So now we're caught up. That's all that's happened in my life in the last three months. I lost 30 pounds and shaved my beard off. There's probably been more. But I know that, like, like you, like my family's also been handling the pandemic. Like, we've also been walking through those sorts of things. And, and, you know, I have to say, a lot of what was preparing the message for night tonight is really some of my observations as we've been walking through this. You know, my family has been incredibly blessed over these last several weeks because, because for us, I'll, I'll say, we've been predominantly unaffected by a lot of what's been going on. You know, like for us, you know, we have a, a, a home with a nice big backyard. We're outside all the time. So then all of a sudden when they were like, don't leave your house, we were like, okay, we'll be in the backyard like we always are, right? Like we didn't have to worry about that. Um, you know, Elise homeschools the kids. So their routine in school, like it never got interrupted. You know, my job's been secure. We've had savings set back. Like almost all the staff here has been working from home, but there's been a couple of us who've, who've still kind of been here and, and watching over the office and I've got to be one of them. So like I've still, I've been socially distanced, but I'm like, still coming into the office, and, you know, even on a relational element, like, Elise and I, we have that kind of marriage where we're just, like, tied at the hip, like, we, we prefer to just be with each other, so when all of a sudden, they were like, you know what, you really probably shouldn't leave your house, and you should just see your family, we were like, well, that's what we wanted to do anyway, like, (laughs) that's perfect, you know, like, so it it was, it, it felt normal, you know, we're, we're young, we're healthy, when we've had the opportunity to go help people or make ourselves available, we could do it and not have a lot of fear. You know, even being on staff at a church where, where I work somewhere that, like, it's, it's an essential job, and we get to come and be a part of Sunday and, and make sure that the live stream, everything happens. You know, I get to sit. I get to sit in the chairs, and I get to hear Pastor Jonathan preach live. I get to sit and watch Pastor Isaiah and the worship team worship live and like these are all things like I know that for some of you even that mo- that thing right there like hearing a message live listening to the worship live is like there's that jealousy of like oh my gosh you're there you're there and I've been really blessed that I haven't been affected too much and and listen I'll tell you this in the hearing message live and being a part of worship live you better get yourself ready because when we come back together, I promise you, like being being here in the worship and then knowing what's coming, that when we come back together, what I feel like God's going to do in those first couple weeks when we're back is just, you can feel it. You can feel it in in, in the spirit of what he's doing, and and I'm excited. But, you know, being so, in, in many ways, relatively unaffected, It's left me with this unique opportunity to observe. Like in many ways, I feel like I've lived in a bubble. Like like I've kind of been in this thing that we're like, my life hasn't been affected too much. But but the fear and the stress that permeate homes all over the world. Like this isn't a Broken Arrow or an Oklahoma or a U.S. thing. Like it's it's worldwide. And, And it's given me this opportunity to observe in a way that I haven't been able to do before. And so that being said, of what I've been able to observe and see and feel what God's doing, I want to be able to speak boldly towards that. But at the same time, 
I want to be sensitive to the fact that there are a lot of you who are listening and watching whose lives have not felt that way. Like, it hasn't necessarily looked that way for you. And, and, I, and I know that because we've had different experiences, like, I don't want to in any way press my experience on you, but I want to be able to share with you, living this perspective has given me a chance to observe some things that I believe God is doing and inviting us into, and I want to invite you into that same thing. And so that being said, let's pray. Like, wherever you're at, like, if it's safe, like, if you're in your home, like, bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're driving, don't. That's not good. But, but listen, like, let's engage together and let's pray and ask God to speak to our hearts. God, we come to you today and we're thankful for your word. We're thankful for your goodness. We ask you tonight that you would speak to each and every one of our hearts individually. God, that you would encourage us, that you would challenge us, that the very words that need to be spoken to us, that we need right here in this moment, that, God, you would do it because you can and because you love us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So what I want to talk to you tonight about this particular perspective is I want to talk to you about your hiding place. The, the, the turtle, the, the, the turtle, <laughs> the title of tonight's sermon, we'll call it the turtle, is your hiding place. I want to talk to you about that. Because our hiding place is that place that we go to escape. Like all of us have something in life that we're hiding from. And all of us have some place that we go to hide from that thing. Like even right now in some ways this, like I'm not talking specifically about our instance we're in. But it could absolutely be a play on words from the fact that many of us have been in a hiding place. Many of us have. Like we, we've been avoiding um, socialization with people. We've been avoiding stores. We've been, you know, like all these things have been going on. And in many ways, it's like we've been in a hiding place. And I know for a lot of us, that hiding place has been our home. But I believe there's a deeper hiding place that we go to besides just going home. That we go to to get away from the things that scare us, from the things that make us anxious. And I want to talk to you about that today. You know, what I started to think of when I was considering the hiding place as I started thinking about memories as a kid. So like, if you will, like envision, like go back in your memory bank, remember what it was like being a kid. Or maybe if you're old enough that you've got some kids of your own, bring both of those into the play, your own childhood, but then your observation of your kids as well. We all had those little kid hiding places, didn't we? And think about like from an adult perspective, how silly those things seem right now. Like, like this, okay? Do you remember when you felt scared as a kid going to bed at night and it was dark? Do you remember that? And do you remember that feeling that when you pulled the blanket over your head, all of a sudden you're safe now? You remember that? How silly was that? Like, how bizarre was that? Like, there, like, you could convince yourself, there's a monster in my room, there's a bad guy under the bed, I must pull the blanket over. <sighs> safe. Like, what? I can't see it, so it can't see me. But as a, like, as a little kid, you're just feeling like, this is it. And listen, I know for many of you, you might be like, I'm 45 years old, still pull the blanket over my head because it's dark at night. <laughs> like, I'm not making fun. But I'm just saying, like, as a kid, we, we hid like that, didn't we? Or, or even, like, when we would play hide and seek, you think of the, like, the weird things you did to hide that didn't fool anybody, but you thought, I'm a genius. Like, I watch my kids now, we'll play hide and seek, and, like, Levi, my three-year-old, there would be times like he'll hide under a blanket with half of his body hanging out and totally convinced, totally convinced nobody can see him. Like, and besides that, he doesn't even understand the fact that he's like he's giggling. So like, if I couldn't see you, I hear you. But like, there's none of that. Like, he think like, if I can't see you, you can't see me, I'm hiding. It's the easiest thing in the world. Or maybe you even remember like when you were a kid, if you got nervous or shy in public, you'd hide behind your mom or dad, right? Like, do you remember that? Like kind of feeling invincible of like you're, you don't know what to do. Maybe an adult talks to you and you're just kind of like, you know, you're looking up at them and it's scary. And so, so then all of a sudden mom or dad's there and you kind of tuck in behind them, right? Mom or dad's trying to like coax you out and you just keep shuffling behind them a little bit. Like you could feel invincible because like it was a hiding place. Like you felt safe there. 
Or maybe you were one of those kids that, like, when you put the sunglasses on, I'm invisible. I don't know if I have any of those out there. Right? Like, like you know what? Social interactions, I don't like them, but when I put the sunglasses on, you can't see me. I say, well, I'm looking at you. You can't see me. I'm invisible. Right? Like, they're, they're hiding places. They're things we hide behind. I mean, even, like, when it came to hiding at your house for games or to, like, scare somebody, we all had that place we went to. Like, for me, I was always a tiny kid. I was always the shortest, always the skinniest, always the weakest. I mean, I was just me. I was just a little kid. So if I wanted to hide, I could hide anywhere. So, like, my favorite place, if I was trying to, like, scare one of my parents or something, is I would hide in the couch. Like, you know that spot where, like, right underneath the backrest and right behind the seat rest, I could squeeze in there and pull it back, and you actually, like, couldn't see me which it's still a miracle that no one crushed me when they sat down somehow. Like, I always jumped out to scare them before they sat. Like, thankfully, one of my parents didn't just, like, sit down and just, like, crush me in the, you know, the little uh, crease of the couch there. But I loved it. Like, it was my favorite place to hide and, like, you know, like, scare them or, you know, whatever. We all had that place that we wanted to hide. And, you know, then we grow up and we look back and, like, it feels silly. Like, it feels silly to think, like, I hid under my blanket, and I felt like if there was a monster in the room, I'm safe now. But, but we grew up, and we look back, and we see it, but now we got our grown-up hiding places, don't we? Like, like, we grow up, and now we hide behind our savings account. Or we hide behind our persona that we've created for ourselves that people like. Or we hide behind our toys, like our houses and our boats and motorcycles. And we, we hide behind our degrees or our titles. Or maybe we hide behind our own health. They're like, I've, I've put these things out in front of me. I hide myself there. And these are my grown-up hiding areas. And I feel like it's a much more adult thing to do to hide myself in my savings account versus under a half of a blanket. But at the end of the day, it's still kind of just silly. And a lot of us might have learned that in the last few weeks. We were hiding ourselves somewhere. I, like, I don't want to get ahead of myself too much. But we've been hiding ourselves somewhere we thought was so safe. And then something came along and crushed it. And we find ourselves going, where, where do I hide my life now? I thought I was healthy or I thought I was wealthy or I thought I had enough position and title. And now those things didn't matter. You know, my hope is that and my prayer for you would be that, like, in this time of COVID-19, it would allow you an ability to look at your hiding place, that place you escape, and evaluate it. Because you got a unique chance that you might not have ever had before. Like, if this never happened and we were just living that same life that we were living back in, like, January... Like, we might still be in the same old hiding place thinking that all is good. But a lot of us aren't now. A lot of us got that shook. Nothing is worse than being in a hiding place that you feel is safe, only to find that you like to look like my three-year-old halfway hanging out of a blanket. Nothing's worse than that feeling. And so my prayer is that you would evaluate that place that you hide your life. You know, going back to thinking about what it was like as a kid in that hiding place, do you guys remember ever going to a friend's house and them showing you all the good places to hide? Do you remember that? Like you could go over to their house and like you play hide and go seek or you're going to do something, you know, and they show you like, no, 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 like listen, no one will find you here. Like they've lived there for years so they know the little places like out in the yard or in the house or this secret, you know, door or whatever. Like they know these things and they can show you the secret hiding places. You know, I, I was talking with Elise one time about some of our experiences growing up, and she was a, a PK. She was a, a preacher's kid, and so um, she was at the church a lot growing up. And so she remembers, like, going and exploring the old church building. And they would find the coolest places that no one else knew about. She was like, listen, if you wanted to play hide-and-go-seek, you would never find me. <laughs> and it was like, well, of course, like, she found these places that no one knew about. Like, you had to, like, not only were they hidden and tucked away, you had to have time to explore, and you had to be small like a kid to find them. And, and she was like, you know, she would tell me all these things. And I just remember in my own childhood, like, going to friends' houses and, like, showing you that, that best place. You know, tonight... 
as we get ready to jump and open, uh, jump in and open the scriptures. I want to invite you to my hiding place. I want to invite you to that place that has given me peace in the midst of circumstances. Because the, the place that I believe that, that, that I've been able to see through the word and been able to go to as that hiding place for me and for my family, I want to invite you into it. And you know what? You might already be there. Great. I'm glad. I didn't see you there before, but I see you now. Um, but like, I'm glad you, like, but, but a lot of us, we've been hiding in places that we, we thought were safe and maybe they weren't. And so I want to open the scriptures to you. We're going to look at a lot of different verses in Psalms. They're, they're all very short. If you're taking notes at home there and you want to write these down to be able to go back to later, you can go ahead and go for it. In Psalm, we're going to start in Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. It says, whoever dwells in the shadow of the Most High and the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalm 17, verse 8, says, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Again, Psalm 36, 7 says, How precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Psalm 61, 4 says, Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. Last one, Psalm 63, verses 5 through 7. It says this, My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with my joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. The hiding place that my family and I have chosen to go, to put our lives in, is what he keeps referring to here over and over and over of the shadow of the Almighty. He says, you're my shelter, you're my refuge, you're my fortress. But he says, I rest in the shadow of the Almighty. In the shadow of his wings, he keeps using over and over again in, in the book of Psalms here. And, and I love it because the picture that so many times we get is the idea of, of, of the mother hen who's got its chicks around, who's got her wings out, who's covering all those baby chicks. There's no wind, there's no rain, there's no predator, there's, no no, there's nothing to be afraid of or fearful of in the shadow of their mama hen's wings. And, and, and over and over here in Psalms, what he keeps saying is, I want to be in the shadow of the Almighty. I want to be in the shadow of his wings for that to be the place that I hide my life. And, you know, to be in the shadow of the Almighty implies a couple of things. One, it implies position. To be in the shadow of the Almighty implies that he is higher and I am lower. And listen, this ought to be a, like, this is a comforting reminder because many of us have, have chosen to hide our lives in certain things and the things we have chosen to hide our lives inside of, we did it because we thought that they, they were bigger than us, that they were too big to be touched. And, and maybe we found out in the last few weeks that maybe they weren't as big as we thought we were. But, but in the shadow of the Almighty, that he is much higher than where we are. The Bible says his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. He is at a higher plane, which is why us beneath him, we can sit in the shadow of his wings. He's not just higher than us in position, he is more powerful and greater in size and scope. He's bigger than me, he's more powerful than me. That's why he's the one casting the shadow, not me. God is the shadow caster in this scripture here. He's the one, he's large enough, he's big enough, he's powerful enough that his shadow encompasses me. And again, this is a comforting reminder as a believer that, that I, I sit underneath the God who is so great and so mighty and so glorious and so powerful that here in his shadow there's nothing to fear. What will reach me that he does not allow? He, who will move past him into the shot, into under, nothing. Like, it, it's, it's here. And inviting you into that place 
just like going to a friend's house and them inviting you into their, their best hiding places and inviting you into my hiding place, into the shadow of the Almighty, there's things here that we get to enjoy that you don't get anywhere else. You might feel like you do, but we don't. One, in the shadow of the Almighty and in and, and the hiding place that is him, there is safety. Do, do you remember those moments as a kid um, where you were with you know, mom or dad, but like, even, like sometimes I'll even say like that feeling of being with dad. Do you remember the feeling of being invincible when dad was around? Like, I'm telling you, there were moments, like, for me, I had a very strong mother as well. Like, it, either one, like, it didn't matter, mom or dad. Like, my dad was huge, and my mom was just, like, she was, had that personality that was just there. And, and so, like, either one, like, you know, I felt very insecure a lot of times as kids. There was no fear when mom and dad were around. Right? There were a couple of moments in my life where, like, I, I found myself in a predicament, in a situation. It was very uncomfortable. And, like, when my dad showed up, it was one of those moments it was like, <sighs> like, you remember you could just breathe? Like you just felt so just safe. Like, e even from the, like, I had friends like that. Because, again, like, I was always the littlest kid. So, like, I was never the one, like, I was never going to get in a fight with anybody or something like that. Like, one, I knew that was a dumb move. I was the littlest one. Two, my mama would kill me. Like, I'm not getting in a fight with nobody. Like, I, I, I ain't going to get whooped in a fight by somebody and go home and get whooped there, too. Like, it was not going to happen. Um, but, but I had friends around me who were big, big people. And so, like, I felt safe with them. Like, I didn't mind talking smack to anybody. Now, catch me one-on-one, -on -one, I wasn't going to say nothing, but with my friends around, it was like, say something. Like, I just wasn't afraid. Like, I just, I felt safe. In the shadow of the Almighty, there's safety. What's going to harm you when you belong to him? Like, there's safety in that. More than just safety, there's rest. There's rest in the shadow of the Almighty. One of the very last sermons that we had an opportunity, uh, the one last series that we got an opportunity to go through when uh, uh, it, right before all of these things hit before COVID was that series out of rest. Man, it was fantastic. If, if you missed it or honestly, even if you just have time now, it's a great series to go back to because it was, it, it was great. We find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. When, because here's the deal, in his, like underneath, he's more powerful, more glorious, more mighty than anything we could be, be a part of. What can, what do I have to be anxious of here? Like in this place, what is there to be anxious of? What is there to be fearful of? What is there to be, uh, what, what is there a feeling of that I would be in need or of want of anything when I rest in the place of the Almighty? What, what do I need to run from here? There's no, like, running implies that where I am is not safe. Like, I can hunker down in the shadow of the Almighty knowing that there's safety, but there is a place to rest. What will come at me here? Nothing. Anything that comes at me here comes because that might be something, like, if God allows that. But, like, listen, if he wants to stop it, he will. I'm in the shadow of the Almighty. There's rest. In my hiding place, there's boldness. Listen, in the shadow of the Almighty, when you realize that you are not the one casting the shadow, but he is and you belong to him, there is a boldness in the way that you live your life. Listen, going back to the talking about like feeling the way I was around, like I had big friends and they loved to pick fights with people, which meant I just loved to pick fights on their behalf because I was never going to fight anybody. But if they were around, there was boldness there. Like, what are you going to do? You got to go through them to get to me and I'm more than willing to let you do that. And in the presence of God belonging to him, like, there's a boldness to say, listen, I'm going to live the life he's called me to do. I'm going to do what the Holy Spirit leads me to do. There's a boldness there because I'm in his shadow. I belong to him. In my hiding place, there's no shame. There's no shame because we are in his, when we're in the shadow of the Almighty, we are hidden in him. If you've ever seen the, the mama hen that's got all the little the chicks around, it's almost impossible to see even how many are under there 
or really even see at all. Like all you can tell is she's puffed out and you might just see a couple little legs. But at the end of the day, it all looks the same. They, they mold together. It's this, this same color, same thing. You can't tell where the, the mama hen ends and the little chicks are. It's just this kind of morphed again. And listen, that's our relationship with God. We've been molded together as one family. We are one in him and with him. And, and there is no shame being hidden in him because I'm just a reflection of who he is. I just, I'm becoming more like him, more molded into him. And as I hide myself in him, it's a place where there's no shame. It's a place of provision. There's no worry about the elements or the things on the outside of who he is. Not when I'm there. And honestly, there's ultimate joy in my hiding place. Because listen, think about the things that stop our joy. We don't live a life that's joyous oftentimes because there's things that we're afraid of. There's things we're anxious about. We're tired. We're worried. We're ashamed. Like all these things that that just come and they take over the joy out of our life. Listen, when we can rest in his shadow where there's safety and provision and boldness and rest, all of a sudden all that's left is to live a life of enjoyment. We live the life he called us to and he's about his glory and our joy. So there's joy in this hiding place. And my desire is that you would be, like that that would be the place you hide your life. In the shadow of the Almighty. And so what I want to do in in the last minutes that we have together is is I want to invite you into that place. But I want to invite you to consider and ask yourself some questions that might feel difficult to ask and answer. But they give us an opportunity to to do some self-reflection and to really find out when it comes to our life, where we are. COVID has given us a unique opportunity to locate ourselves. Um, if, if you've ever been lost or you've ever been in the woods or you've ever been outside somewhere and you're trying to find your way somewhere, like if you don't have a good map or you don't have a good compass or an understanding of, of, of geography and topography, like, like you can easily find yourself lost and, and at times not actually even realize you're lost. Like, feel good about yourself, and you're way closer to danger than you ever realized. I believe that this period of time, one of the, one of the things, the blessings that has come from it is it's given us a chance to locate ourselves. Where am I? Who, who am I? Where have I hidden my life at? And I want to give you some questions to ask and answer for yourself. And listen, I would, I would encourage you, write these questions down. Pray about these questions. If you have close friends or family that you want to talk, like invite them in. Have them ask and answer it as well. Because if we can do this, I believe, honestly, we can find ourselves in a really sweet place. We, we can find ourselves in a better place after COVID than we did before if we get a chance to locate where we are and where we're hiding our life at. So the first question I have is this, where is your hiding place? Is it in the shadow of the Almighty? Is it in a relationship with Jesus or is it anywhere else? There's just two options. Everywhere else gets lumped together in the other option. It's either in a relationship with Jesus or it's somewhere else. And I would even say this, If there's something you're hiding yourself in, it is because you've put a great amount of trust, love, and affection towards that thing, and and the Bible would call that an idol. Like, we all hide ourselves somewhere from something, and if it's not in Jesus, it's in something that we idolize, that we put great value on. I know a lot of times think of the word idol, and we think of like old days of like a thing, and like an actual thing that they would look at, and it was... It was their thing they protect, you know, they, they um, depended on to protect them and provide for them, and they would pray to it, and they would worship it. But an idol is simply just misplaced love and misplaced affection. The thing that belongs to God, we've put it somewhere else. So for you, if it's, if it's success in your savings account, 
those, those things might be wise, but if you put your trust in them, they're not just that. They become an idol. And so I, I, I want you, and, and I'm going to say this next question as, as sensitively but as boldly as I can. I'm not asking you what your answer is. I'm asking you what reality is. Because there's a lot of people in church world who will say that they hide their lives in Jesus, but that's just the facade they put up. And behind the scenes, they actually know where they really hide it. And it's not him. So I want to ask you a couple of things to help you identify your idol, if there is one. What are you turning to in times of stress, anxiety, and fear? What are you turning to when you're stressed, anxious, and fearful? And I'm not talking about healthy coping mechanisms. I'm not talking about things that you do to help you cope with certain, I'm talking about things you put your trust in. Some things might be sinful at their nature. Some things might be really good at their nature. But if you put your all into them and you trust in them more than Jesus, it all gets lumped into the same side that's not good. Like, when you're stressed and you're anxious and you're fearful, like, do you turn back to drinking again? Like, is it porn that you go back to? Is there some kind of a emotional affair that, that you've, you've had at work that, like, you distance yourself away from and I've got control of it, and you get stressed and anxious and you dive back into it? Is it your kids that you just live vicariously through them because if you pour yourself into them, if you turn yourself towards them, you don't have to think about the person that you became and you can just live through them? Like, do you just drop everything you can into your retirement or to your savings account because you'd be like, that's the thing that will always stand up to keep you safe? Maybe it's a relationship or a spouse. Like, some of these things are sinful in nature, and some of them are excellent, God-given gifts. But if we put all of our love into that thing and we trust it, it's an idol. It will crumble. And I'll say this. Listen, here's the deal. Again, I know real things have happened during this time that are tragic. We've lost lives. We've lost jobs. We've, I mean, tragic things have happened. But if there's been a, a silver lining out of any of this, I hope that you have so deeply pressed into the things that you worship during this time, Jesus or otherwise. Because if you've deeply pressed into Jesus, then you found some really sweet things in your life that he's done for you. But if it's anything else, I hope you have squeezed every bit of life out of it so you can see that there's nothing left and it crumbled under your worship things that we wouldn't have done before because we were trusting in all these things before COVID hit. And now we realize it crumbles under my pressure of my worship. Another question you could ask would be this. Not just what do I turn to when I'm stressed, anxious, and fearful. What do I pour myself into for satisfaction and purpose? Is it my job? Is it money? Is it sex? Is it a hobby? Is it sports? Is it some kind of relationship? Is it you? I know that seems really dumb, and honestly, it really is. You're a terrible idol. Like, maybe you're one of those people that you put everything you can into you. Like, you're it. Like, you're the source of your own worship. Like, how terrible of an idol is that? Like, that's actually worse than the rest. You might be able to trick yourself into thinking that your retirement account can rescue you, but, but you, like, you know you. You. So you pour into your own education and your own appearance and your own health. And, and listen, those are great things to steward. They're not everything. We steward ourselves. We steward our education. We steward our job and our money and our relationships. But at the moment we turn to them, we pour into them for significance and purpose, they will crush under our worship. And listen, here's the, the last one I'll give you. And then we'll close. Not just what do you turn to when you're stressed and anxious and fearful. Not just what do you pour into for satisfaction and for purpose. What are you asking permission from before you say yes to Jesus? Anything you have to ask permission from before you say yes to Jesus is an idol. Anything. I don't care if it's sinful or if it's super religious and churchy. 
If you check with it before you have to say yes to Jesus, it's an idol in your life. And I believe if we can ask these questions, we can find out where we're hiding our lives in. And so my, my challenge, my encouragement through this would, would, to, to you tonight would be this. If you've been hiding yourself in the shadow of the Almighty, thank you, Jesus. Thank him that he has rescued us and saved us, and our relationship with him is all that we trust in. But whether you're a believer or not, if you've been hiding yourself in something other than a relationship with Jesus, it is an idol, and let's crush it tonight. Let's not make it through COVID. Let's not come on the other side and come back together to worship, still hiding ourselves in the idols and putting Jesus out as our facade. Tonight, let's make the choice through hard questions, through prayer, through conversations with our friends, through real, real discussions to say, where is my life hidden? And if it's anywhere other than Jesus, then I'm going to put it in him because in him there's safety. In him there's no shame. In him there's boldness and all the things that we talked about. So wherever you're at, if you can bow your heads, go for it. If you can't or don't want to, don't. But let's finish with this. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you've never put your faith in him to let his sacrifice on the cross pay and save you of your sins, we're going to do that tonight. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer to pray wherever you're at. And if, if you are a believer, but you've just been hiding somewhere else, let's come back tonight to the shadow of the Almighty and to rest in him. God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. We make a choice tonight to hide in you. The only place that really can uphold our worship. The only place that really can sustain us and give us rest and protection and safety like we need. And if you're out there at all and you're listening and, and you want to make a decision to follow Jesus tonight, I pray that you pray this after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I put my faith in the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. And he died, was buried, and resurrected for my salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, listen, church, it was an honor to be able to, to, to preach and bring the word tonight. Again, I'm excited to see you guys when we get back together very, very soon. Don't forget this upcoming Sunday. Um, man, join us for service online at either 9 or 11. I know one of the things we've even been talking about recently has been this Sunday is going to be a fifth Sunday, and we're doing a fast track for grow classes. So at 9 o'clock, we're going to start grow classes, and we're doing all four. Um, for those of you who've been waiting for an opportunity to knock it out in a Sunday, um, join me online. Go to destinychurch.com forward slash events. You'll find the invitation for that Zoom class, um, for that, uh, to be able to see grow classes on Zoom, and we'll be able to see you on Sunday. Uh, besides that, you guys are dismissed to go back to your families. Love you guys, and have a wonderful week.